Hey guys, welcome to my Skyrim godlike weapons and armor glitch tutorial. I know there's many videos out there like mine, but I'm going to break down how to do this glitch step by step for both new and old players alike and simplify the glitch in the process. The main purpose of this glitch is to allow your character to become super powerful without mods while still being able to get achievements and trophies on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation. Some videos make this process confusing, so first, I'll make a basic overview for us to see how the glitch works. Second, I will go over a list of items, perks, and locations we need to visit in order for you to be able to get this glitch working fast. Lastly, we'll put the glitch to the test so you can see for yourselves that it works. Let's get started. What you see in front of you is a flowchart I've made. It's to help us better understand why we are doing what we are doing so we can do it with ease when the time comes. The key to the glitch is the creation of restoration potions. So let's start there. Restoration potion increases potion making. To expand on this, the potion that increases your magical school of restoration also influences your alchemy enchanted armor items to be able to make better potions. Potion making increases enchantment potion. To expand on this, the stronger your potion making is, the more powerful your enchanting potions will be. Enchantment potion increases smithing and alchemy enchantments on weapons and armor. To expand on this, when you enchant new armor, you'll be able to use your strong enchantment potion to make the alchemy and smithing enchantments on your armor incredibly high. And the end result? Smithing and alchemy enchantments on weapons and armor increases weapons damage and enchantment strength. To expand on this, the smithing enchantment allows you to increase your weapon strength and your armor's defense, while the alchemy enchantment allows you to make more enchantment potions that will be strong enough to put godlike enchantments on those same weapons and armor. That pretty much wraps up the flowchart, guys. Pause right here if you want to study it for a little bit longer. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let's start off on our item list. Under apparel, you'll need six things ranging from clothing to jewelry. A basic shirt or dress will do. I usually choose a blacksmith's apron. Next, a head circlet. Then a pair of gloves. Followed by a ring a necklace, and an additional ring. Later on in the video, I'll show you where you can buy these. Remember, these items cannot be enchanted. Next, let's grab an enchanter's potion to make our first enchantments we make as strong as possible. You can find 10% or 20% enchanter's potions at shops. Again, I will show you where these can be purchased later on. Then, we will need at least two grand soul gems and four greater soul gems. Preferably, all those soul gems should be grand soul gems, but it's alright to have just two grand soul gems and four greater. Let's move on to our ingredients. First on our list is Abyssinian long fins, then Cyrodiilic spade tails. Then we're going to need Haygraven Claws and Snowberries. The two fish will create our Restoration Potions, while the Haygraven Claws and Snowberries will create our Enchanting Potions. Next, we're going to need two items that have enchantments on them. The character I'm currently playing with has already found these items and disenchanted them on the enchanter's table. I'm going to go ahead and go into my enchantment list on the enchanter's table and show you what these enchantments are. The first one is Fortify Alchemy, which helps you increase more powerful potions. The second one is called Fortify Smithing, which helps you improve weapons and armor. 
Later on in the video, I'm going to show you what shop to go to so that you will be able to find these items and disenchant them so that you can have these enchantments on your enchanter's table as well. That pretty much wraps up the item guide list. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. Let's go ahead and go over some perks. In your alchemy tree, increase alchemist to 3. So you need your alchemy level to be at least 40. Then you're going to need 1 point in physician. And last, you're going to go ahead and need 1 point in benefactor. Benefactor is the most important because it stacks on your initial alchemy and it gives you a 25% greater magnitude. Let's go ahead and head on over to your enchanting tree. Your enchanter should be at least level 60 so that you can put 4 points into your enchanter perk. This will give you an 80% increase on enchanting your items. Then, we're going to go ahead and put a point in Insightful Enchanter. Insightful Enchanter increases the skills that you put on your armor so that you have a 25% increase. And that stacks with the initial perk that you put on there. Let's increase your enchanting first. Talk to Ferengar and Whiterun. Purchase all the petty soul gems out of his inventory. Wait 48 hours to go ahead and make his inventory reset to get more Petty Soul Gems. Next, find Yorlin Greymane out by his Skyforge, or you can find Adrian Avenici out in front of her shop, War Maidens. Pick one of these shop owners. Once you've picked one, you're going to want to go into their inventory and purchase all of their iron ingots, as well as all their leather strips and their leather. If you want, you can turn the leather into leather strips. You're going to need these so that you can make the next item on your list. Once these items have been purchased, go to the Blacksmith Forge. Go into Iron and make as many Iron Daggers as you can. Then, you're going to need to enchant these. If you don't have any enchantments learned yet, I'm going to show you where you can find your first enchantment. Directly northwest of Whiterun on your map, you'll find a little camp. It's called the Silent Moons Camp. There's a guaranteed item up by the forge. Next by the forge, there's a chest. The chest will sometimes have some items that have been enchanted. In this case, we have a pair of sneak boots and we have a dwarven sword of taper. But the guaranteed item is going to be next to the forge. Usually it's a weapon that has a lunar enchantment on it. You'll also find a book that will help increase your smithing. Once you find an item with an enchantment on it, you'll be able to go to an enchanter's table and you'll be able to disenchant it. If you've learned the enchantment, the item will be grayed out. But if you haven't learned the enchantment yet, it'll be white. Once you disenchant the item, it'll be destroyed in the process. Some enchantments that you learn will only be able to be put on clothing, jewelry, and armor, while other enchantments will be able to be put on weapons. To increase your enchanting skill, under items select your iron dagger, under enchantment select your lunar enchantment, and under soul gem select the petty soul gem you purchased from Ferengar. Press X to craft the item. You can sell these items, and after you're done, you can go ahead and use the money to repeat the buying process from the shop owners. To increase your alchemy skill, you'll be able to find all kinds of plant and flora all over the world of Skyrim. We're going to go ahead and stay inside of Whiterun, and we're just going to pick some basic flowers like Lavender and Cotton Tundra. Once we've picked enough of the plants, we're going to go ahead and go to Arcadia's Cauldron. There, we're going to find a station where we can create potions. Usually shops like this, you'll be able to talk to the shop owner, and she'll have ingredients for you that you can use at the potion making station. Let's go ahead and make some potions with the ingredients that we've found and purchased. One of the potions that we're definitely going to be able to make is Resist Magic. That was with the Cotton Tundra and the Lavender. Once you make the potion, your skill will increase. The higher your skill, the more powerful the potions will be just on their own without the perks. That pretty much wraps it up for the Alchemy tutorial. Let's go ahead and move on to the next segment.
For this segment of the video for locations, we're going to talk about some of the important locations you're going to need to go to in order to get the items we talked about earlier in the video. The first area is in Whiterun. It's Arcadia's Cauldron. This is where we're going to go to get the Hayraven Claws and where we're going to be making most of our potions. The second location is the Whiterun Stables. Once you go to the Whiterun Stables just outside of Whiterun, you'll find a carriage driver. The carriage driver is going to take you to the second and third locations that we need. The first location is going to be Solitude. So you're going to talk to the carriage driver, you're going to hire him, select Solitude, and then you're going to go ahead and once you've hired him, go to the back of his carriage and get in. The next location is going to be Solitude. There's two important shops that we're going to be talking about here. The first one is going to have this little sign in front of it, and it's called Radiant Raiment. Radiant Raiment is going to be the shop that we find where we can get the items we need that has the smithing and the alchemy perks on the items we purchase, as well as a lot of the clothing that we needed at the very beginning. Not only does she have the clothing and jewelry we need, but she also has the items that have the enchantments on it, like the alchemy and the smithing. Remember to wait 48 hours so that you can reset her inventory if she doesn't have those. And that brings us to our second shop, which is Angeline's Aromatics, just across the street. Once you go inside the shop, there's usually two women at the front counter. They actually can't sell anything to you. So go ahead and ignore them and go to the back room. There, you're going to find Angeline. She'll have the Haygraven Claws that you need. This will bring us to our third location, which is over here in Markarth. Just south of Markarth, we're going to go ahead and farm the fish that we need to create our restoration potions and start here. We're going to follow the stream all the way down this way, and we're going to end here at this cave. First, you're going to start outside the city. Then you're going to go ahead and you're going to run down the trail just a little ways. Once you see your first stone bridge, you're going to go ahead and you're going to jump over the first spillway. It's going to lead into your first tide pool. You're going to see the Abyssine fish, and you're also going to see the Cyrodiilic fish. It's okay to grab all the fish that you see, because some of the other fish that you have are going to help you increase your alchemy level. Don't mind seeing enemies. Most of the time, they don't hurt if they're the fish or they're the mud crabs. Other enemies that hurt you for a lot of damage, you'll be able to run away and they'll usually leave you alone. At this point, most of the spillways are going to be a little bit more on the tall side. Try to avoid the next few, just in case. That way you don't die. And this will bring us to our last location, just north of Whiterun. In this area of the map, we'll find snowberries. Snowberries and Haygraven Claws are what we use to create Enchanter's Potions. The snowberries are usually going to be just off of the trail, so there's no need to stray too far from it. That way you don't run into enemies that could potentially kill you. That pretty much covers this segment. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Alright guys, so for this last segment, we're going to go ahead and put everything together that we've gone through in the video, and we're going to test the theory. So I'm going to activate my Enchanter's Potion, whether it's the 10 or the 20%, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick my first item, which is my ring. I'm going to select for my enchantment, my alchemy enchantment, and then I'm going to go ahead and if you did two of the Grand Soul Gems, use those this time around. We're going to use the two Grand Soul Gems. So now with the perks, you should have the 20% on each of those items. Both of them should be alchemy. And now we're going to get to work on starting potions. Remember, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the restoration potions so the fish come first.
going to speed this up a little bit so you guys don't have to wait around for me. Now, after you create your first potion, drink the potion, then go into apparel, take off your ring and necklace, put your ring and necklace back on. You dry rinse, repeat over and over again. Drink the potion, take off the ring and necklace, put the ring and necklace back on, make another restoration potion. If at any time during the step that you forget to take the ring and necklace off, no big deal. You just do it the next time around and the game will be tricked again. But if you continually forget to take the ring and necklace off and put them back on, you're not going to make any progress with your potions at all. So you have to make sure that that is the most important step, taking the ring and necklace off and then putting them back on after you've drank the potion. If your percentages get too high, what's going to happen is your game won't be able to recognize what's going on and it will crash. I would not recommend going past 300,000% on your potion increases. If at any time you do go past 300,000%, you're playing with fire. Just be careful. Otherwise, your game's going to crash and you're going to have to restart again. At this point of creating potions, what you want to do is create an enchanter's potion, probably four or five of them. Go ahead and drink the enchanter's potion that you just made. Then, go ahead and go back to the enchanting table. And I went ahead and I used on my gloves and on my blacksmith's apron uh, the ability to increase my smithing. Now I can increase weapons by 700 plus percent. I'm going to go ahead and head down to Adrian's forge now. And I'm going to go ahead and increase my bow that I have on me. Alright, I'm at the grindstone. And I go ahead and I grab the item that I need, leather strips, to increase it. I just went from 9 damage to 331 damage because of what I've done to both my blacksmith apron and the gloves that I have on. You'll be able to, at the grindstone, increase weapons. And here, at the workbench, you'll be able to increase the armor rating of your armor. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions about this tutorial at all, please leave me a comment. And if you like the video, please go ahead and share and subscribe. I could use it because I'm still a relatively new channel. Take care. Have a wonderful day playing Skyrim.